So for this um, aspect of the experiment, we are also trying to determine specific grid capacity. But this time around, we are doing it with a metal block. So the previous one was a liquid, right? Experiment 10 was that of liquid. Now this one is for a metal block. Now they said it is what? A good conductor. So they said there are two parts. The first part determines is going to describe how we can do it with a good conductor under the assumption that the calorimeter does not lose heat so that means that for this part we assume that there is no heat loss to the environment now heat loss to the environment is something that constitutes um, error in our measurement so for the first part we do it in such a way that no heat is going to be lost to the environment or the least heat loss is very minimal so you say we should feed the calorimeter with water, the weight is there and calorimeter. So look at that, weight is there and empty calorimeter together. So that is what? M2. Okay, mass M1 is the metal block. So M1 is for the block. So let's say this is the block. The mass is M1. Then they said stira, weight is there and empty calorimeter together. So this calorimeter and stira. So their own mass is what? M2. So you should fill the calorimeter one third with water and reweigh the stirrer and calorimeter. So we have water, we have stirrer. So this time around, the mass is what M3. So measure the temperature T1 of the water in the calorimeter. So we are going to have T1 from here, which normally should be the room temperature. Yes, because everything is inside the room. So the temperature you are starting with should be. The temperature of the room so each the metal block is tied to a rod a cutting tray with a beaker of boiling water so that means that we need to heat this metal right so that it's going to get hot and we transfer it into this calorimeter so that we can measure the heat loss so what should we do Heat the metal block then record the temperature t2 Okay, in the bigger boiling water and record the temperature of the boiling water. Look at that. So what why they are telling you to record the temperature of the boiling water is so that you can know the temperature of this mass. Because since the mass is inside the boiling water, it's going to have the same temperature as the boiling water, and that is T2. So temperature is going to be T2. So this temperature of the mass after we have heated it. So Quickly transfer the hot solid into the calorimeter and stir thoroughly. So we put it here. So that means what we are now having is our calorimeter with water, with stir and our mass. So record the maximum temperature attained by the water. That's T3. So we have a temperature here that is attained by the water. So what you are going to do is that what you notice that I said it that um, the heat loss by this body, the rate of um, heat loss. I, I said that when the body is having a high temperature, it's going to lose heat, while those ones with low temperature will gain heat. So automatically what will happen here is that this hot metal will lose heat and the calorimeter and the water and its contents are going to absorb that particular heat. So that means that we are going to say heat lost by calorimeter is going to be equal to what heat gained. Let me write it here. That heat lost by calorimeter is going to be equal to heat gained by what the uh sorry it's lost by the meta it's going to be heat gained by the because the meta is one that is hot here it's going to be equal to heat gained by the calorimeter together with water so it gained with by what calorimeter plus heat gained by water so and plus heat energy loss to the surrounding so we must take care of that too but in this experiment you know we said that we are assuming that no it is lost to the surrounding so that means that we are only considering only the calorimeter and water so what are we going to do so it lost by our meta is going to be the mass of the meta which is m1 multiplied by don't forget that it is what m c change in theta so that will be the mass of the color uh, the meta multiplied by the specific capacity of the meta we are representing it as s then change in temperature of the metal. Now look at that. The temperature of the metal, change in temperature of the metal is going to be what? Initial temperature was T2 after we heated it. Then the temperature now dropped to T3 because 
when we put the meter inside the calorimeter the temperature is going to drop and temperature of the water and calorimeter will rise until they all have the same temperature so that's why we come here we say the initial temperature of the meter minus the final temperature of the meter which is TTD because all of them at this point are together so they are now having the same temperatures so they are now having the same temperatures so that's going to be equal to um, how do you calculate the heat gained by the calorimeter the heat gained by the calorimeter is going to be the mass of the calorimeter and stirrer which is m2 so that's going to be m2 multiplied by the specific capacity of the calorimeter now specific capacity of the calorimeter i'm not sure here uh the is 400 because it is a copper calorimeter so you multiply it by 400 then you multiply by the change in temperature now the change in temperature is the temperature of the calorimeter rose from t1 to t3 so it's going to be t3 minus t1 because we are sure that the temperature rose then we do the same thing for the um for the what so it's for for the water so that will be mass of water now how are we going to get the mass of water how are we going to get the mass of water now look at this the mass of water is going to be m3 minus m2 because here there is no water here there is no water so that's going to be m3 minus m2 then the change in temperature is going to be t3 minus t1 because they are together so we have the same change in temperature so we already have all of these values from the experiment so we have measured all these values from the experiment then we input everything to this formula and we get the answer although this might not be necessary this is just the process of the experiment not something that they might ask us but it's, it's, it's possible that they ask us some small things that are like hidden in the process so that's why it might be necessary for us to understand the concept